That's somebody now. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the bride and her father. This is not working. <clears throat> I don't think this is working anymore. I've lost the mic here. <laughs> All right, let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to acknowledge your presence here with us today. We thank you, Lord, for being a God that is so great a God that is so good to us. We thank you, Lord, for bringing Gershon and Christine together on this day. And Lord, we pray that all that is said and done today would bring glory to your name. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do. We thank you for the Lord Jesus who died and rose again for us. Uh, and Lord, thank you so much. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, please take a seat. There we go. All right, we're back online. <laughs> we are gathered here today in the sight of God and in the presence of this congregation to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Marriage according to God is a lifelong union of faithfulness between a man and a woman. It is an honorable state of life instituted by God himself in the beginning, and it signifies the spiritual relationship that Jesus Christ has with his church. It was ordained for the procreation of children, that they might be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It was ordained that those who would be joined in marriage would live a chaste and holy life, pleasing and glorifying to God. It was ordained for the mutual companionship help and comfort that the one ought to have for the other, both in prosperity and adversity. Therefore, it is not to be entered into unadvisedly, lightly, or merely to satisfy physical desires, but prayerfully, with careful thought, with reverence to God, duly considering the purposes for which it was ordained. Today, Gershon and Christine have chosen to enter into this sacred covenant and it is a privilege and honor to be here today with them to share this moment with them. 
Therefore, if anyone here can show any reason why these two may not be lawfully joined together in marriage, let them speak now or hereafter remain silent. Gershon and Christine, I charge you both as you'll answer before God, who is the judge of all and from whom no secrets are hidden. If either of you two know any reason uh, why you may not lawfully be joined together in marriage today, I, I ask you to now confess it, for be assured that those who marry contrary to God's word are not joined together by him, neither is their marriage lawful in his sight. Good. Mr. Rudy Abuenga, as the uh, father of the bride, do you consent to give to this man your daughter's hand in marriage? I do. <laughs> Gershon, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to love, honour and keep her in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, be faithful only to her for as long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? I do. Christine, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? Do you promise to love, honour and keep him in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, be faithful only to him for as long as you both shall live. Do you so promise? I do. Good. Mr. Rudy Abuenga, you may now give to this man your daughter's hand in marriage. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this blessed moment. Uh, thank you, Lord, for joining these two. And we just pray, Lord, uh, that you would continue to uh, help them to grow. Lord, that you would mold them according to your will. Lord, that their marriage would be a shining testimony uh, of how you would want a godly marriage to be in this uh, dark and dying world. And I pray, Lord, as well, that you would reward them with many children. Lord, help, give them the wisdom, give them the patience, give them uh, everything they need so that they can raise these children uh, to grow and honour you in all that they do. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, bless the rest of this uh, meeting here. And we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, now I'll ask the uh, bride and groom to take a seat, as well as the bridal party, as we uh, sing a few hymns of praise to the Lord. Now our first hymn will be Praise Him, Praise Him. It is on the back of your booklet that you received today, and we'll sing the first song, Praise Him, Praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him. 
tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. All right, amen. All right, I'll have everyone upstanding for the reading of God's word. And I'll invite uh, Mr. Ramon Yuseko to read the passage of scripture for us. Our reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 31. And the reading goes like this. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up, that he might sanctify and cleanse it without, with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. So, oh, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is the reading. Thank you. Okay, please take a seat. We'll now sing another song of praise to God be the glory, which is the second song on the back of your booklet. And we'll sing uh, all verses. <coughs> To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes 
that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He had done. Great things He had taught us, great things He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. All right, so Gershon and Christine asked me just to share a few words <laughs> uh, this evening with us. And I, and I do know that, you know, there are probably uh, people among us today that are not Christian or not believers. And I just wanted to take a couple of minutes just to explain, first of all, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be saved, and what it means to be a believer on Jesus Christ. If I could just ask you to consider the question, you know, if today was your last day, if you were to die today, would you be 100% sure that your soul would go to heaven? You know, many people, when they think of this question, they usually think to themselves, you know, I've done good in my life, but I've also done bad, and I'm not sure whether I'll be good enough to get to heaven. But you know, the truth of the matter is that uh, the Bible tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So the truth is, none of us are good enough to get to heaven. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we can admit that. You know, we've lied, we've stolen, we've broken many of God's commandments in the past. You know, I often tell people that if you were to uh, project your thoughts onto a screen, you probably wouldn't have any more friends, you know, because we know our heart, it's wicked and sinful. You may not have even been invited to this wedding if, if, if somebody could see all your thoughts. Well, you know what? God does see all your thoughts. You know, and God sees everything. He knows that we are sinful. Now, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Because God is holy and righteous, he must punish sin. He cannot see all that sin and just leave it unpunished. And he created a place called hell where somebody who does not get saved from the punishment of sin will spend all eternity. It's a terrible place. But God did not want people to go to hell. God, God did not want anybody to go to hell. So what did he do? And this is probably what we've all heard before. You know, God became a man. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ stepped into his creation he became a man. He was born of a virgin. He lived for 33 years. He lived a sinless life. The sole reason why he did that is so that he could die on a cross to be the sacrifice for your sins and for my sins. The Bible says that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ, after dying on the cross, the Bible says he himself bare our sins in his own body on the tree. He died on that cross as though he had done all your sins. And then he died, he was buried. Three days later, he rose again to prove that he could overcome death and pay for all the sins of all the world, past, present and future. Now that is something that is probably familiar to us, for those of us who grew up in Australia. But then the question then remains is, if Jesus Christ did that for everybody, what must I do to be saved? How do I make sure that what Jesus Christ did on the cross applies to me? Well, we don't have to guess because in the Bible, that question was actually asked in Acts 16. Uh, a jailer asked of Paul and Silas, the two apostles, and asked the question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
And the answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now notice what they did not say. They did not say, go to church and you'll be saved. They did not say, be baptized and you'll be saved. They did not say, turn from your sin or repent of all your sin in order to be saved. They didn't say, make Jesus the Lord of your life or commit your life to Jesus or give your heart to Jesus. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why? Because the Bible says in Ephesians, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, no amount of works will ever make us good enough to go to heaven because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this is the most famous verse in the Bible, and it says that we just need to put our faith and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, what does it mean to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, if you think back to the first question I asked you, do you know for sure if you were to die today that you, your soul would go to heaven? If your first thought was, oh, I hope I'm good enough, that shows that you are trusting yourself. What you have done is you have put your trust on yourself and you're trying to get yourself to heaven. When the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what that means is you need to put your trust on Jesus. Not what you do to take you to heaven, but what Jesus Christ has done already for you 2,000 years ago on the cross to take you to heaven. The Bible says, once you put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ and you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says you have eternal life. This is something that happens once in your life. It's a one-time event and you're saved forever. Why can you be saved forever? Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he did not just die for your sins in the past, he also died for the sins in the present and all the sins in the future. And all our sins are in the future because Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago. So I would just encourage you, if you are not a believer here today on the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would just take time to consider your soul, consider your eternal destination. Jesus Christ said, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? And this is the foundational truth that binds Gershon and Christine today so strongly. And I'm sure this is something that they would like everyone here to hear uh, on their special day. Now, I just wanted to say a couple of things about marriage as well, just uh, to the, uh, the passage that we read. But Jesus Christ says here in Matthew 19, verse 4 to 6, And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And a couple of things I just wanted to mention here. I wanted to remind us today that it is God that joins two people in marriage. Gershon and Christine, you are not married today because a government married you or men married you, you are married today because God himself has joined you together. And I think that's important because oftentimes governments and man has ways to end a marriage. But I just wanted to remind everyone here today that if God has not ended the marriage, you are still married in the eyes of God, even if you can try to get it legally done with the government. The other thing I wanted to mention here, Jesus said, have you not read? that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. And I just wanted to remind us of the truth today that marriage is between a man and a woman. It is not between a man and a man, and it is not between a woman and a woman. And the reason why I'd just like to remind us of that today, especially in our country, there is an agenda for you to accept the homosexual agenda. And I would just encourage you today not to buy into the lies and the propaganda and the nonsense and the oxymoron that is same-sex marriage. Not only is homosexuality a grievous sin in the eyes of God, it is unnatural and it cannot fulfill the primary purpose of marriage which is to have children and to have them raised by their biological mother and father in the nurture and admonition 
of the Lord. Now we read here in Ephesians 5, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. Now, Paul the Apostle reveals to us in this passage of Scripture the spiritual significance of the relationship between a husband and wife. And it signifies, as I said in the introduction, the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church. And I think it's important for us to remember that this morning because this is not the most politically correct position there is, but nevertheless, God's word standeth sure. And we know that God's word has said this from eternity past and it will continue to say this eternity moving forward. And I think we ought to trust our infinitely wise creator knows what's best for us. So how does it signify Jesus Christ and his church? The husband is meant to be a testimony of Jesus Christ, a sacrificial and loving leader. And the wife, the church, the submissive and obedient follower. So I would definitely encourage Gershon and Christine to take God's advice on board for a biblical and peaceful marriage. Now the last thing I want to say is to Gershon and Christine. I want to remind you today that you are making a covenant of promise. It's a covenant of promise to serve. And the reason why I'm telling you that today is because a lot of people have the wrong perspective on marriage. They go into a relationship thinking, what am I going to get out of this? How does this person complete my life? How is this person going to make my life better? How is this person going to get me where I want to go? And I want to remind you today that the, the covenant that you're making today is a covenant to serve. But if you do the flip side of that and say, okay, well, I'm not going to serve myself. I'm going to serve my spouse. Well, you've still missed the ultimate goal of marriage. Because if you make your marriage only about your spouse, Christine, if you make your marriage only about your husband, you still miss the mark. The Bible says here in Matthew 22, 36 to 40, Somebody came to Jesus and asked, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So Jesus was very clear that the first and greatest commandment was to serve the Lord. Now, if you serve the Lord, you will serve your spouse. But I just wanted to remind you today that you serve, Gershon, you serve your wife because you serve the Lord Jesus. You love your wife because you love the Lord Jesus. You lead and protect and provide for your wife because you're commanded by the Lord Jesus to do so. Christine, you love your husband because you love the Lord Jesus. You serve your husband because you serve the Lord Jesus. And you obey and you submit and you follow your husband because Jesus Christ has commanded you to do that. And that's important because the day will come, and believe me, it'll be very soon, <laughs> that you'll feel that Gershon is not worthy of your service. Or Christine, that Christine is not worthy of your service because obviously in a, in a marriage, there are going to be ups and downs. But let me assure you that Jesus Christ is always worthy of your service. And I think if you keep that in mind when you say your vows today and keep Jesus Christ first, you'll continue on in the faith and in your marriage and it'll be blessed for you. 
So with that in mind, I invite you guys up here to say your vows. Right, so hold hands, face each other. All right, Gershon, if you just repeat after me. I, Gershon Yuseko. I, Gershon Yuseko. Take you, Christine Ebwenga. Take you, Christine Ebwenga. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded life wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Christine, if you repeat after me. I, Christine Ebwenga. I, Christine Ebwenga. Take you, Gershon Yuseko. Take you, Gershon Yuseko. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish, and obey. To love, cherish, and obey. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. All right. At this time, I'll invite uh, Mr. Neil Ellis. If you can join the bride and the groom at the signing table, I'll also invite the witnesses to come up, and we'll have the signing. Right. And while we have the signing, we have a special song from Mr. Ramuel Prayra. So I invite Mr. Ramuel to uh, come up to the microphone and sing a special song for us. Almost there. Almost there. If you want to find the wedding certificate as well. 
We'll have now, now have the exchange of rings, so I'll ask the bride and groom to join me up here, and the bridal party, if you could stand. Galileo, if you could please pass Christine's ring to Gershon. <laughs> repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a token of my love as a token of my love and faithfulness and faithfulness wear this ring wear this ring as a reminder of the vows as a reminder of our vows we have spoken today we have spoken today Galileo, yeah, if you can please pass Gershon's ring to Christine Christine, if you'll repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And faithfulness. And faithfulness. Wear this ring. Wear this ring. As a reminder of the vows. As a reminder of the vows. We have spoken today. We have spoken today. Right. By the authority of God Himself, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Gershon, you may kiss your bride. For therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. <laughs> All right. I think we, let's, get a, let's get a good one for the photo, I think. <laughs> Do you need any more, Jason? <laughs> All right, if I can have everyone up standing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor and pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Gershon Yuseko. Oh, that's <laughs> that's alright. <laughs> 